Ladies and gentlemen, let's try game into the com video. Let us discuss low level optimization. In other words, direct X12 and mantle. So these comments are from Brad Waddell. He is, of course, the CEO of Stardock, so he does know his stuff. And he's given a series of tweets, including some um, responses to myself on Twitter. I have placed the relevant links in the article, and the article itself, by the way, is linked in the video description. So if you want to follow up more with this, you can go ahead and you can click on the relevant link in the video description and check out the article, because there are also going to be a couple of other references and graphs and stuff that I'm going to be uh, mentioning throughout this video, as well as some analysis regarding DirectX 12. And yes, guys, I will be finishing off the DX12 um, stuff in the next few days. I've just been really busy, unfortunately, in real life, and I've also just been sent some uh, hardware to review as well, so I need to uh, do a little bit of scheduling, unfortunately. So anyway, as I said, um, Brad took to Twitter, and he began by responding to a user uh, who tweeted um, regarding while back, Phil Spencer said the DX12 wasn't a massive change, so the user questioned him on, on this and asked, you think he meant development or performance? And Wardell responded, development is basically the same. My general impression is that Mantle is higher performance, but DX12 is slightly safer. It's less API and more implementation. Now, this part, in my personal opinion, is key. And um, I don't... This may offend a few people, but I personally 100% agree with Brad. He said, I wish people arguing this topic were more technical. It's pretty simple. So then I personally tweeted him, and I said, I think Phil was asking people to be more realistic with expectations, a performance boost, but not like 588%. That's how I read his tweets. Uh, now, of course, I was exaggerating quite substantially in the 588, but I'll explain myself further in just a moment. So Wardell then responded to myself, and he said, look, it's hard to tell, um, but Mantle gave our engine a six times boost over DX11 on the same hardware. And before anyone takes that out of context, he clarified by saying that six times was when lots of units were shown on screen. Your mileage may vary, end quote. Now, why is it I emphasize a few of those statements? Well, here's the problem. Right there, Wardell, in my personal opinion, has hit the nail on the head of a lot of technical discussion. So, firstly, he points out that Mantle is likely to be a better performing API than DX12. This isn't really new. I've personally mentioned this a couple of times, and even Microsoft have pretty much admitted this themselves. Is there any particular reason for it? Is it because Microsoft are not as good engineers as AMD? No. Is it because Mantle is implemented better? No. It's simply because Mantle is, well, vendor specific. At the end of the day, we're primarily focused on the PC just for a second here. Mantle is for GCN cards, right? Graphics Core Next, so AMD Radeons. On the other hand, the X12 is not. DirectX 12 is aimed at AMD, it's aimed at NVIDIA, it's aimed at Intel, and so on and so forth. So you can't realistically expect an API that naturally has to have a slightly higher level of abstraction to offer the same level of performance, right? It, it just can't happen. So the second point I'd like to, well, point out is that a lot of the problems regarding DX12 um, and by DX12, I also mean Mantle, and a lot of this stuff that's appearing in the media right now. It's a lot of misinformation, quite honestly, because people are, like, quoting stuff of very, very small sections of quotes, and a lot of the time, I'm not going to point out certain websites, because I'm pretty sure a lot of you know who they are anyway, but a lot of the time, those websites sensationalize a specific quote, so rather than the whole thing being analysed or giving into a decent amount of context, instead people focus on this quote because it's been sensationalised with, you know, the headline. And that also means that it's kind of unfair. And that's one of the reasons that I think Phil Spencer gave the tweet that he did. Because people are kind of 
well, I saw personally some people thinking that when DX12 was going to be released for the Xbox One, there was going to be a huge performance increase. This is why I personally said, you know, performance boost, but not 588%. I was, of course, being a little bit sarcastic there, just to kind of illustrate my point. And another point that we have to remember, um, because a lot of the time in... Well, I keep saying a lot of the time, it's really annoying me. But oftentimes we see developers will be quoted basically calling the other developer wrong. And that's not necessarily what they mean. Let's take two scenarios, and I've explained this a little bit better in um, the article because it's really difficult to say this verbally, but let's assume you've got two games, game A and game B. And let's say a developer is working on game A and another developer is working on game B, and one developer finds the let's say the developer behind game B finds that optimizations are much more important. Well, does that mean that that developer is right and the other developer is wrong? No, it just means that their development approach better suited optimization. For example, how many units are going to be on screen? That's one of the things that Brad points out immediately. What are they doing with the game engine? Which version of the game engine? What middleware is the game engine using, if any? How is the physics being handled? What lighting is it using? What rendering techniques are being used? How complicated is the AI? There are... And so it's not necessarily that one developer is right or one developer is wrong. It's just that depending on what they're doing, an API, a specific API or a specific form of optimization or a specific piece of hardware, for example, the, the old chestnut of the Xbox One's ESRAM, like a lot of the time you'll see um, a developer being quoted, well, the Xbox One's ESRAM offers no performance benefit to the PS4 or the PS4's architecture is substantially better. It all depends what you're trying to do. And a lot of the developers that are being quoted, you know, if you, especially the more phishing websites, they are being the developers themselves, and I'm not criticizing the developers here, this isn't the developers' fault, but let's say I'm making a really, really simple platform game. It can have a very nice aesthetic, let's say Limbo, because I'm a massive fan of the aesthetic style of Limbo. But if you were to ask, if if you were to ask the developer, you know, how difficult was it to get the game running, let's say it was ported to the PS4. You can't really ask them how difficult was it to get that game running at 1080p, 60 frames a second, because it's it's it, you might as well ask them how difficult is it um, to get Pong running at 60 frames a second on a GTX 780 Ti with like 16 gigs of RAM. It's like you have to kind of take the specs and the hardware, and then it, it's a very tricky situation. And I'm not criticizing gamers for this. That's the thing. Like, I'm not even saying you guys as in the viewers because I know a lot of you are actually quite technically savvy. And I know this from the questions that I'm being asked on Twitter, I'm being asked on Facebook, or like some of the tech messages on Facebook. I'm like, okay, this person knows what they're saying and I have to actually sometimes even do research to give you guys a response because it's like, I don't want to give you misinformation. That's why when I say to you, I'm doing research on something, and this isn't, by the way, to make us sound better, this is just me being really honest. If I'm going to give you information, I don't want to just give you misinformation. And I'm sure that sometimes I might have given something out, um, maybe said something wrong, because that's just kind of the nature of the beast. You can't always be 100% right. I try to be, don't get me wrong. But the bottom line is, I think mo many of you are technically savvy. And, you know, you've obviously done a lot of your research. This is another reason that for a lot of our articles, personally, I always try to provide the sources for this. And sometimes when I've actually provided the sources, someone's come back to me uh, a couple of days later and said, hey, by the way, uh, Paul, I found this. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I actually missed this PDF, or I actually missed this, um, you know, this quote, or I missed this um, article on this website. And it's always good, because that's, that to me is how you actually start to learn and how you actually start to, well, understand things, to be honest with you. That, my friends, is the key. So as I said, this isn't um, aimed at anyone. I just think that it's very important for us to take 
things into context. And as for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 and the PC and all of this other stuff, what does it mean? Well, for the Xbox One, obviously the PS4 is not using DX12, I'm just using it as an example. For DX12 on the Xbox One, we know some features are already implemented on the system. That's been confirmed by Microsoft themselves and AMD. If you need more confirmation on that, I've placed a link in the this article which will take you to our uh, developers day breakdown of the Xbox One. And they clearly say that certain features are in and uh, being implemented, right? But with that said, it's not full DX12 implementation. The reason is because, well, DX12 is still being worked on at the end of the day. So, yes, there probably will be a performance boost. It's not going to be the ludicrous amounts that some fan sites have said. On the other hand, it's also going to make uh, a difference. It's not going to be zero difference, which is what some other fa uh, fan sites are saying. So it's kind of like, yeah, it, in the end of the day, it's going to definitely make porting between the systems easier, which is definitely a good thing, in my personal opinion. It's going to make the coding for the titles a little bit smoother and it probably is going to make rendering a little bit more efficient. I still need a bit more information to be honest regarding how the Xbox One handles a multi-thread rendering on its version of DX, um, its version of DirectX. I've heard some conflicting reports on this uh, mostly because, well, sometimes some of the reports are based on very early versions of the Xbox One's SDK. So it's like things can change. Oh, and finally, to close things out, I'll say one last thing. You've got to remember that APIs, at the end of the day, just like game engines, will evolve. So it's like Mantle has been released. Just for example, and I use Mantle simply because it's the low-level API at the moment. In fact, it's the only low-level API at the moment. Um, hopefully, DirectX is a worthy competitor, especially because at the end of the day, DirectX uh, 12, theoretically speaking, will be more popular simply because you can use higher level abstraction if you want, in other words, more like DX11 code, but you can also go more closer to the metal. But ultimately speaking, Mantle is still evolving. It's not the final release. Let's assume, let's just say Mantle, I honestly don't know what version of Mantle it is in terms of like the incremental number, but let's just say it's 1.0. It's not, 1.0 isn't going to be here in six years time. It's going to be like, you know, every so often they're going to release up 1.1, 1.2, and it's going to keep improving, which is going to mean that we're going to get better performance optimizations and engines themselves are going to better utilize these techniques that's the other thing and of course developers themselves are going to get more used to them as well in other words they can implement them better they understand what they can be used for what so much they can't be used for what things can be shifted to compute how is compute even affected is it even affected and a lot of these questions to be honest developers just simply don't know because well, some of it's not even been implemented on DX12 at the moment, and Microsoft are remaining fairly tight-lipped on the whole DX12 implementation. Like, some stuff they're being quite open with. Like, they'll tell you, this is what we're doing. Yes, this is what we're doing. Other things, I've questioned Microsoft. I have the emails <laughs> in my account, and they've just basically said, yeah, sorry, we're not going to be answering this, because, well, yeah, it's of confidential at the moment and that's kind of how it has to be unfortunately and so developers in some cases may know something but they can't say because they're under NDAs in fact I've had to answer, uh, sign NDAs on stuff myself in some cases it's just kind of how it is particularly if you're under a view site you can't mention certain stuff some stuff I would have loved to have told you guys like early but I can't because I'm an un under an NDA and I prefer not to be sued I know that's pretty shocking and all. Anyway, I'm completely and utterly off the beaten topic here, uh, beaten path here, because I've just been really busy the last few days and I haven't really been able to kind of chat with you guys, which I know has probably made you, you know, miss me terribly. Not that I blame you. Anyway, I'm going to be getting going now, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.